It's just all here. They even have my favorite Greek, uh, uh, ah! uh, my favorite Greek uh, uh, epic based on Xenon. He's right here. It's all here. Time for a little more de-influencing. There is actually no such thing as an Amazon must-have. Hot girls are doing this, the cool girls are doing that. Do you mean the rich girls? Be honest, most people don't have guest bathroom drawers stocked with an entire mini's aisle from Sephora. Most people don't even have a guest bathroom. Most people don't have the time, money, energy, or privilege to prioritize a perfect seven day a week workout split that they stick to without fail no matter what. And a lot of times the people who do are monetizing it. And that's fine, I just thought you should know. Dupes don't really work if you're gonna buy 12 of them trying to replicate the real thing. On the other hand, the same lip color doesn't really look good on everybody. You'll probably be more comfortable if you figure out what you like best. If you have the extra time and money, that's probably a better use of your time and money. You don't need a different plastic container to corral everything that's in your home. That one's for me. And most importantly, the time that it takes to go cast a ballot or to contact your representatives or to just sign a single petition is time really well spent. Those things are built to be annoying. They're built to feel futile. They're built to be complicated and confusing and bureaucratic and boring. Don't let that stand between you and the power of your voice. Okay, I love you. Bye. Here's some shit your mother should have taught you about folding laundry because obviously you all have absolutely no idea what the fuck you're doing. First off, for the middle child of the laundry world, the fitted sheet. I need you to go ahead and vacuum that dirty ass floor. Grab it by the corners, flip each one over your hand, meet it in the middle, then get frustrated, roll into a ball and thrash it in the fucking corner. Alright, but seriously, you're gonna start by taking two corners, flipping them over top of your hands, and then meeting them in the middle. Flip one side over your dominant hand, switch hands, and then slide your dominant hand down to the other corner. You're gonna end up with a mirror image on both sides. You're gonna lay that whole thing down on the floor, then you're gonna meet the two elastic corners in the middle. I find it easier to get down on the floor and then what the fuck, bitch. Take the bottom piece, fold it up once, take the top piece, fold it down twice, and you're gonna wanna get all the air out as you do this. Then you're gonna meet both ends in the middle. You should create this little pocket that you can shove one of the ends into itself and it'll hold it into place and protect it. Almost like a little foreskin. Now, I'm slow as absolute fuck, so it takes me a little while, but if you do everything correctly, you should end up with a perfectly folded fitted sheet that will not come undone and you can use it as a pillow. The underwear, fold each end over the crotch, fold the top part down, hold the top piece, and shove it inside itself like this. And you'll end up with this perfect little pouch. Now, the t shirts work, it's a little tricky. You're gonna have to really pay attention. Two inches from the collar, pinch, line straight down to the middle of the shirt, pinch, bring your top hand down, pinch the bottom of the shirt, bring it up, orient it a little bit better, and then fold over. Oh, and then what I like to do is I like to do one. Extra fold. This is the only acceptable way to fold sock. One inside out sock, right side out sock, lay on top, go ahead and make a little L, roll, roll up twice, and you're gonna take the sock that's inside out and flip it inside out again, the right side out, and you'll end up with this little pooch. Everything should make a pooch shape when you're finished. Now for the jeans, I don't even own jeans. I had to buy these from Plato's closet. You're gonna grab it. Boom, done, no, okay. Lay your jeans on nice and symmetrical like this. Fold the top part down until the pockets are showing. Take both legs, fold them up to meet the top. You're gonna open the waistline and then tuck the pant legs into the pants, like, same thing on the other side. Tuck the pant legs into the pants. You're gonna grab it right down the middle, and fold. Perfectly fold the pants. If you want, you do another fold right down the middle to make it a little more compact to fit in drawers and shit like that. And lastly, the towel. You're gonna fold it in half, long ways, and you're just gonna start rolling from the top all the way down like a fucking cannoli. If you do everything correctly, you end up with this very penile-esque cinnamon bun. And if you have a towel that looks like this, I am so sorry to break it to you, but you are poor, my friend, and your mother stole this from the nearest hotel. I just so happened to notice that you weren't following me. <laughs> Fix it. Guys, here's the thing. If Britney Spears can get through all her shit and still be standing here, so can you. So can I. And you're not gonna tell me that you can't. Cause I can walk through that fucking wall right now. Good morning world. I am so cold that not even fluffy sweater, two pairs of socks and slippers will keep me warm. The only good thing is that my goat cheese will stay fresh. So today I'm going to make emergency clay pot heater. From two clay pots, one big one small, some kind of clay or stone plate, bunch of rocks and shells, and tea candles. I am only going to use three, but of course more is always better. Put rocks and shells around like this. Put tea candles in the center. Light your candles. Happy Bjor's Day. Keep them a little bit apart from each other or you will light house on fire. Take the smaller pot and put it over candles on top of rocks. Take one empty tea candle put on top to cover hole to prevent heat from escape. Take big pot, put it on top. 
cover the hole with a small shell. The small pot will heat up by candles and create convection current and oxygen layer between two pots, and you will have greater surface area of heat. In about 30 minutes, this will be so hot that I cannot touch, and my goat cheese will be goat soup. Hey girlies, um, just a little piece of advice. If you think you may be pregnant, just have a really, really fun day with your guys and gals at Six Flags. Um, ride all of the roller coasters twice. And when you go home, it'll be barbecue sauce in those panties. I love you guys. Why would I make them so uncomfortable? It probably has to do with your reputation. I have a reputation? They feel your methods, your theories are... Spooky. Do you think I'm spooky? Is there a socialist candidate for president, Claudia de la Cruz? Her platform gets better and better every day. She is marching for the liberation of Palestine. She's calling for an end to billionaires. She's in support of black rights, queer rights, women's rights, workers' rights. I think I'm going to vote for her. But it doesn't matter. You can't vote for her anyway. What? What do you mean? Like, she's not going to be on the ballot? <laughs> I see the confusion. No, no, no. You only have one option. You have to vote for this guy who was born 20 years before the civil rights movement. And as a result, has all of these internalized mechanisms for white supremacy so that he thinks he's like a little bit better than all people of color. And you can see that in action right now because he is currently bombing thousands of innocent children on the other side of the planet. And the whole world is begging him for peace, but he just keeps rejecting their cries for peace with this really malevolent, creepy smile. Don't even get him started on younger people. He thinks you all are going through the craziest phases, what with the gayness and your gender and all those things. I mean, like, how do you even know who the girl is? Am I right? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, you're gonna vote for that guy. Are you high? Why would I ever vote for him? Oh, I see why you're confused again. You have to vote for that guy because standing behind him is a pack of irradiated feral dogs with super rabies who ate a copy of Mein Kampf. And if you don't vote for that guy, who again, doesn't seem to really know what's happening that much and like nobody's talking about it, but you know it's definitely Parkinson's, right? We know it's Parkinson's, right? If you've ever had a family member with Parkinson's, it definitely looks like that with like the stiffness, difficulty speaking, the mild dementia and stuff. But anyways, yeah, you have to vote for that guy. Otherwise the dogs will get it. But why don't we just all vote for the young woman of color who wants all the same things that we do and that'll keep the dogs from getting in. <laughs> you just don't understand politics, do you? Yeah. Gun in the holster bit, right in your poster bit. Onion grass, now the weather's getting colder, so onion grass is showing up in your lawns, yeah. Onion grass, it's free people chives, so I'm going to put it onto my breakfast sandwich. Taller than the normal grass, can't you see? It's delicious and the low, low price of free. So won't you come and eat some with me? Here I was thinking I look cute only to realize I look like the orange doodle bop. This is some doodle bop tomfoolery. Would you like to know what the day of a very busy sex worker consists of? You would. That's what I thought. My day started bright and early at 4 a.m. Got to the client's house at 5 a.m. I'm a topless maid, so I clean their house topless for two hours. Now, why did this client want me there so early? Well, because that's the only time that they're available. This client is a doctor and works at night and sleeps all day. The days he's off, he's with his children. He's not married, not anymore at least. He gets off at 4.30 a.m., so he stays awake a couple hours after his shift to watch me clean. And I've had this client for a couple months now. I fucking love him. He's the only client I will get up that fucking early for. And he also leaves me a hefty tip every single time of $1,000. I made $1,600 at that first house. Then by that time, the sun is peeking its beautiful face in the sky. I grab some coffee from Duncan. And I go to my second client's house. They are a lovely lesbian couple. And I do backyard landscaping for them. Topless, of course. They got a fence high enough. Nobody can see in, so don't worry. I also cleaned their pool as well. I was there for two hours, made $800. 
is brunch time around this point. And that is my next client. I go and sit down at First Watch, have a nice paid brunch. Got paid $500 for that and the eggs and fruit were delish. Then I headed over to another client's house to wash some cars. This was a first time client. He had me wash his two Corvettes and detail the inside. All of course while wearing my micro kini. Made $1,200 there. But guess what? His neighbor came out because he saw me of course. And he hired me to wash his truck. Now I did have to sacrifice my lunch hour for this, but you know what? A bitch will make a bag. Food can always wait. By the way, if that sounds like I'm promoting an eating disorder, I'm not. I'm just saying that I'm okay with sacrificing my lunch hour every once in a while to make money. I don't always do it. Anyways, and I made an extra 400 with that last minute client, so worth it. Then I went and mowed a pasture for three hours. Topless. Now a lot of you I'm sure are wondering, oh my God, how are you not burned to a crisp? This client, he has a fancy dancy tractor, the one with the little roof or sun protector above your head. Plus I put on at least two pounds of sunscreen, a hundred SPF. Um, so yeah, I, I was good, but I made $2,500 from that. Then I had to go to one more client's house, clean their house for an hour topless. Got $350 from that. And now I'm back home. Today in total, I made $7,350. I have my security guy, Joe, who comes with me on these jobs and I pay him 30%. I pay him 30% of the lump sum total. So he made $2,205 of the $7,350 I made today. My take home was $5,145. Pretty damn good day. Now I will say, I don't have those days every day. Okay, today was particularly busy. Like I said, I've been up since four. I've worked over a 12 hour day, but I damn sure ain't complaining because I don't really know of any other job where you can work that many hours and make that much money. I've said it before and I'll say it again, be your own boss. But I will say one thing, the term mo money, mo problems has lived up to its reputation. But I love money and I love problems, so I Hi, today a British person said to me that Americans have no culture, which first of all, like the call is coming from inside the parliament. Yeah, it was a British settler colony. It's a country built on capitalism, consumerism, and crimes against humanity. The politics and a lot of the culture suck, but nobody does dumb, funny bullshit better than we do. I have compiled a list of cultural dumb, funny bullshit that is purely by the people, for the people. God bless America. <laughs> Number one, the fact that Philadelphia gets destroyed every time the Eagles win or lose. It does not matter what the outcome is. If the Eagles play, the city is getting fucked up. City officials grease the lampposts to stop people from climbing on them and it doesn't work. Number two, the Waffle House Disaster Index. Waffle House is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Through blizzards, hurricanes, zombies, it does not matter. Waffle House stays open to the point that when something bad happens, the federal government checks how many Waffle Houses have closed their doors to gauge how bad the event is. The last time we experienced a Waffle House Index Code Red was March of 2020 at the beginning of COVID when they still left four-fifths of their restaurants open. Number three, when it's cold outside so you get a pair of jeans wet, and then leave them out overnight so that they freeze standing up. I don't actually know if that's a universal American thing. I just am from Minnesota, so there's nothing else to do. Number four, every time a guy in a football game decides that his best course of action is to just completely jump over the guy that's trying to tackle him. It doesn't even matter if it works or not. Everyone loves that shit. Number five, WWE wrestler introductions. I don't even watch WWE, but everybody's seen that video of them introducing The Undertaker, where it's just a dude like Dracula rising out of a coffin and immediately decking some fucker. Number six, Johnny Appleseed. Johnny Appleseed was a real guy. His name was John Chapman. And like literally all he did his entire life was wander around planting apple seeds and wear three hats at the same time. And then sometimes he'd go into towns and just start talking and everybody would be like, this guy's great. And I bet he was. I bet he was. Number seven, leaking government secrets on Reddit 11 separate times to win arguments about a video game. There's a game called War Thunder that has a lot of military vehicles in it. And like in discussions about the vehicles, people keep leaking like actual classified tank and plane specifications. <laughs> Number eight, the guy you occasionally see walking around in public with like an iguana or a pig or a peacock or something. I mean, I live in Florida right now, so it's not occasional anymore, but you know. I just realized I wrote way too many of these to put in one video, so let me know if you want a part two. Rare bars are at the bars, but down in the valley, oh. In the nest there was a bird, a rare bird, a rattling bird. Bird in a nest, in a nest, on a limb, in a limb, on a branch, in a branch, in a tree, in a tree, in a hole, in a hole, in a bog, in a bog, down in the valley, oh. 
The train is approaching the station. I'm Bernie Wagenblast, and I'm one of the voices that you hear in the New York City subway, and I recently came out as trans. South Ferry, approaching the station. I first started recording these announcements in about 2009. My transition, though, only started in around 2017. As someone who has used their voice professionally for most of their adult life, I've always been very in touch with my voice. I don't mind hearing either my guy voice or my more feminine version of my voice. And I think what that means for trans inclusion is that it makes it a part of everyday life. For New Yorkers who use the subway going to and from work, they're hearing my voice probably at least twice a day. And I hope by being part of everyday life, it just does increase trans acceptance and an understanding that trans people are part of the world that everyone lives in. Oh, Gen Alpha can't read. Oh, right? It's so funny. It's almost like in 2001, there was a law put into place called No Child Left Behind, where it was decided that public schools needed to start teaching to a test. And if the kids in those schools didn't test as well as the government wanted them to, they would just strip funding away from them until those schools were eventually closed down if they did bad enough. And if public schools are closing across the nation, that means people have to resort to private schools, but not everybody can afford private schools. It also doesn't help that COVID pushed a lot of people out of the teaching profession, not to mention the demonization of teachers' unions and all the propaganda we're fed constantly about them and how greedy they are for wanting a living wage and, like, safe conditions for their teachers. And so, yes, that's very strange that the government laid the groundwork for an entire generation to become illiterate. Why would they do that? Because Republicans have told us over and over again to our faces that they want to get rid of the Department of Education altogether, and if you can't read, you can't get into college, and if people can't get into college, then there's low enrollment rates, so why do we even have colleges? It's almost like the system's working exactly as intended. All right, I know a lot of people are going to be going to like their first protest or their first direct actions or whatever it may be. And let me just show you a quick little secret. Black t-shirt. Make it black. Long sleeve. No labels. None of this. Yeah, take it right across the nose. Tie with the arms in the back. Do this. Then you're going to take the opening, the body opening, split it, pull over your head. Boom, boom. Keep yourself safe. Keep the people around you. Nothing identifiable. Make it black. It keeps everyone safe. PB, PB, who's Pima Bryson? Two years ago, I renewed my license. Anyway, why not start my verse like that? You can suck on me, you can suck on a horse. Honey, it was ruined when she bought it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. fashionable self. Nubs, who is also unique in that he was born a hen but is now pheno- This is Joe Biden's America! Wake up, liberals! They got the chickens! Things I know in my 80s that I wish I knew in my 20s. Where did this idea come from that 20s are the time of your life? I'm so tired. Nobody respects you. You don't have a job. You might be living with your parents. I need to get out of here. Don't worry. You're not falling behind. You're actually right where you should be. If you're feeling frustrated, that means that you're absolutely doing things right. That struggle will turn into strength. And pretty soon you'll look back and be thankful that you did it. <laughs> 